My name is Pamela Bathcounty, and my family did Pi which was writing a game a week, judging homework, and all the other things, basically real life. Uh, so Pi Week is an organization that has a game contest twice a year in September and March. So there are limits about what you can do, but we got the idea from Jessica. She went right in this meeting. She's standing there saying, things you can do for Python, do Pi Week. We decided yes. So we're coming back from Lake Champlain from a nice little vacation and say, we should do Pi Week. And the family thought it was a good idea. And I have a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old and, and a wife who's a software engineer. So we've got, we, we're, we're, we've got some engineering jobs. But you know, this was actually at, at, at Lake Champlain. But we didn't, we didn't really know what to expect. And of course, as things go along, life happens. School starts on September 4th. Pi Week st homework starts the next day. Pi Week starts the Saturday afterwards, last a week. The youngest son, Carl, has got three little late games in a practice. And Megan and I are teaching Sunday school to seventh graders. If anybody who dealt with groups of seventh graders, you know how frightening that is. So luckily, so the week beforehand, we prepared. We all have MacBooks, so we got Pi Game installed. Um, we limited what we wanted to do. We set up a Mac Hub. I mean, a GitHub um, organization, so we could all share code. Um, and I pushed two of the previous games, high game games that I worked on, up there so that we could all practice, which is what we did. Ryan and I tried to learn a little bit about using sprites, and that kind of, I could read images, but that was about it. Megan and, I, Megan and Connell really worked on recording his voice, getting sounds involved in one game, and that sounded really pretty good. Connell has got a great imagination, but of course, we never use any of them. So the way the, the way the contest works is at eight o'clock on the Saturday <coughs> of, the, of the week, the theme is announced. There's some voting in beforehand, but the theme this year was called One Way Trip. Now we've been working, we've been talking to the boys this whole week, so they had all their homework done by five o'clock on Saturday night. That never happens. <laughs> So we get the theme, and we kind of thought it might be this theme, because most teams are like one or two people, but four, we all voted for this theme, thought it had a good theme. Um, so we brainstormed. We had legal pads on the dining room table, we were upstairs in our bedroom, coming up with ideas. We couldn't really figure out what we wanted to do, um, but it really felt like a brainstorming session for developers, not just parents telling kids what to do, etc. By the end of the first day, there were still zero commits. So the next Sunday, next day is Sunday. Basically, we get very little work done until that late afternoon. All right, now we're getting going. We finally decide we're going to do a choose your own adventure game. We wanted to do all these great graphics and stuff, but not, we weren't going to be able to do that in the time frame. We didn't have the skill, didn't have the ability. So world is ending. You have to get from your house to the spaceship before the world ends. By the end of the day, we've got these pieces in place. There are six whole commits. All right, the next three days. Our life, our, just our life. Kids, homework, baseball. Thursday's the open house for, for middle school. Megan and I work. We get a little bit done, a little bit done. We come up, basic design is we're doing choose your own adventure. We have situations, you answer questions, you, have, you pose with situations, you do multiple choice, you go to the next one. So that's basically each situation was driven by a CSV file so the kids could work on their own situations and just run them without having to touch code much. Um, Megan and Connell turned out to be really good situations, writing, they got really funny, kind of silly. Um, by Friday evening, it does something, but you really couldn't call it a game, it doesn't end. Um, there's no feel for anything, there's a lot of, lot, a lot of little features that go nowhere. But we have 84 commits. Day seven, all right. <coughs> we start the morning, like any project on a deadline, all right, what do we, what do we have to get done? What can we get rid of? And we get the list down to very little. To, well, something we could possibly manage. Uh, so we tell the kids, all right, Carnal, you're going to keep working on this story and this story. Ryan, we have these five images that we need to get done. You know, we need newspaper articles, we need tickets, we need stuff, stuff. You got that done. So Megan and I work on coding and doing all the pathing, you know, all the, all the progress on the, on the, on the choosing our adventure part, picking out bugs, doing a lot of stuff, maybe pulling in images. Um, the last four hours, we're just working hard. 
10 minutes before 8 o'clock. Ryan, who's been telling us that this is but there's this bug all day, but can't quite explain it, can't quite show it to us. Sometimes because he doesn't really know how to reproduce it, sometimes because it goes away for a little while because he can't get there because we've broken the code. Finally, he tells it, tell, figures it, explains it to us. But I said, I can fix that. And Megan said, no, you're going to break the code. Um, that last day was a bit hectic. First commit was at, nine, it's at, 10 at 11 o'clock in the morning. Last commit was at 7.56 or something like that. 75 commits in, in six, nine hours. That's a lot of work. We just spent, but we just cleared our decks, spent the whole day. At 8 o'clock, we post the game up. Guess what? We can have dinner now. <laughs> <laughs> but the TV didn't come on all day. Things we learned. Carl's got a great imagination, especially if it involves hitting, blowing things up. <laughs> Ryan's got a great eye for fonts, colors, layout. We kind of knew that, but he really proved it. Megan's got a good feel for, sto for story and plot. I need to stop refactoring things. Uh, you can't teach coding in a week. And they had a little bit exposed, but they can't really learn. They can't do anything fast enough in the time, time frame. You can teach people how to develop under a deadline. They became damn good QAers. Um, we also learned that middle schoolers can get remarkably emotional when they actually get involved in the game. In the game, you have to choose what you want to take with you. And Carl started putting himself in that placement. He just broke down. How could I leave this and this? I want to bring all of this stuff. How could I leave my stuff? It was an interesting experience. So, what they learned. What the annual project was. How to argue with programmers if you were a QA person. They got good at telling us what to do. Uh, how to keep lists. Be able to reproduce problems. Um, they learn how to do real main brief brainstorming, not just sitting around with their with their friends and doing crap. And they also learned that when we get stressed, they better not be playing Minecraft. You know, when you're supposed to be testing. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so the game is called In the End. And here's the, 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 these will be available online. I'll post that for this tomorrow or tonight. Um, it doesn't do very much. Um, is it fun to play? Yeah, probably not unless you really like to your own game. It's funny, well, we thought, so especially if you like the idea of marauding middle schoolers, because there are middle schoolers in the game. Uh, we all want to do this again. That was the thing that I really loved about it. The kids loved it. It's hard work, but we've had a great time. Um, we're going to try to do some more private coding practice. We're going to try to not be. Megan has been just worked on a new project with Jane, learning, uh, trying to learn C sharp um, and how to, how to do some development for that. At the same time, make it very stressful. Um, and we'll also think a little more clearly about what we want to do. And some, we have time for screenshots. Yeah, totally. Totally. Quick, quick screenshot. We'll this, make the, time for this, screenshots. this is the open thing. This is the news that this is the newspaper <laughs> shot that, 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 that Ryan's going to be given. Uh, this is one of the scenes. <laughs> uh, this is the ticket to the other planet. planet. Basically, you go through a questionnaire and we choose which planet you're going to go to. Three, three kinds of planets. This is your ticket. Part of the game, you try to exchange tickets to go to the planet you really want to go to. Because of bureaucracy, you might send you to the wrong place. When you get out of your house, you found this image. Basically, this is what we do. We have a picture, and you have an image of both that kind of sets the scene. Megan found this image on Wiki Commons. At a glance, it looks like people leaving their houses and going, going, heading off to the, heading off to the end of the world. Um, you run into a fire. Uh, we're writing middle schoolers. If you look very carefully, there's a guy in yellow in a blue t-shirt with a math textbook. They actually, in the, in the game, they actually beat up some people with the textbook. <laughs> um, here we run into a woman and her son who, who got tickets to different planets. That's Megan, that's Ryan. Um, and then you do actually get off the, off the planet, mostly bad. Yeah. <laughs> Questions? Any questions for Pam? No? We'll both play the game. Uh, have you used any other game dev libraries that are similar to the society? I haven't used any other real dev games. I've, I've used some game, high game plugins that get really flaky on the map. So I figured I could solve that problem, but I wasn't going to try to solve the problem.